and we're going to start talking about how to share um, purposefully and really maybe up your um, relationship building and how you can share what you do and why you do it. So let's get started. And um, here we go. Let me flip over here and I'm going to make sure that you guys are seeing what I am seeing uh, before we get started. Perfect. Okay. All right, so we're going to be talking tonight about purpose-filled sharing, and it really is all about your why you do what you do, and we're going to be working through some different things. Now, guys, I am pulling a lot of this information from Bob Heilig. You've heard me say that he is a business coach, and I am under his training uh, currently, which is really, really exciting. He's a fantastic business coach, and I'm also pulling information from Simon Simon. You've probably heard a little bit about him and it's going to make some sense to you as well And then this is just some of just my own personal experience as well So we're pulling from some different areas that you're going to be hearing about tonight um, And we'll go from there. It looks like okay good It looks like everybody can hear and you're seeing everything. So let's get going and um, so purpose-filled sharing, it is um, coming to the understanding that we are in a relationship business. Everything that we do is building off of relationships, adding a value to those conversations, to those people, knowing uh, that deep down inside that your purpose here on earth is to impact others. Well, that's why the Lord created you. Uh, that's why he has you where he has you in the city that you're in, in the family you're in, in the job that you're in. It is number one, to know him, uh, to fellowship with him, and number two, to impact lives for his glory. And so realizing that you have been given this incredible instrument and vessel in your business to be able to do that um, and that that significance and that impact it is a ripple effect when you are touching people and sharing uh, with people and you're changing their life whether that be from a financial opportunity or from a health standpoint you are changing their futures um, and it changes others futures so it goes into their families or their friends and it goes on and on and on it is a ripple effect. If you think about how I started this business, only knowing a handful of people, and now we have almost 2,000 people on our team um, inclusively, that is a ripple effect of me impacting people who impacted people. And that's what you're doing in this business. And it's so exciting whenever you come to the realization of purpose and legacy and what you're doing and the significance behind that. So let's talk a little bit about the baseline. Because um, I really want us to have a foundation of what we're doing. It, whenever you started this business, you definitely started it. It was about you, but it quickly moves into it being about others. And let's talk a little bit about that. Because in the beginning, when you started this process, you did start um, your business and it was about you, right? Like, it was about your health. It was about you needing financially to pay for your products or to bring in $500 a month or to put you in a position of having a income that allowed you to give to the family budget to be able to pay your bills or it is about you being able to quit a job that you're currently in that maybe you're not satisfied with or you have a fear of losing your job. I don't know what it is, but it is about you. But when you start a business like what we do in network marketing, um, if you do not take the focus off of you and put it onto others, you will end every day dissatisfied, questioning why you're not, quote, making money or hitting your goals or making numbers. You will get burned out very, very quickly. You will quit prematurely because you didn't get it. You didn't understand the baseline of what you do with this business is to impact others, to bring value to others, to change their futures. And that's where you get significance. That's where you get satisfaction. That's where you get excitement is realizing how you're serving other people, changing their lives, the ripple effect. Okay. So if you haven't moved from self-focused to other focused, I want you to just kind of start thinking about that tonight and seeing what your baseline is to be successful in this business. 
your reason becomes another person's hope. You are the inviter. You are the educator. You get to introduce them to a new future, a new future of quality of life, a new future of financial blessing, a new future of purpose, whatever that is for that person, you get to be the one that blesses them by sharing this opportunity with them. So let's talk a little bit about how to share versus how um, versus selling. We do not want to get caught up in selling um, to people. We, we don't want to be, there's a difference between direct selling versus um, network marketing and being in a relationship business. So um, the baseline of that is that you need to understand that people don't, they don't buy uh, because of the product. They buy because of you. They buy because of your passion, your energy, your desire for them to know and understand how life can be different. And that really is that key to success is transferring your energy, your enthusiasm, your, in, your excitement, transferring that to another person and impacting their life. So when you share from that place of purpose and passion, your conversation starts to change with them. Your conversation has this energy um, that makes them curious, that makes them lean in, that makes them have a desire to want to know more because you're going to re start resonating with another person that creates a bond. And that is what makes it unique. That is what allows you to be authentic and people bonding with you because of that authenticity. Um, and we're going to be talking about how just in our brains, how that resonation and that bonding, that connecting and that emotion is what drives the decision, not the facts, not the benefits, but the emotion side. The, another thing about you learning how to share from a place of purpose and sharing from a place of passion is that all of a sudden it eliminates that fear. So for so many of us, and guys, if you can still hear me, give me some hearts or give me some conversation on the comments because let me let me just see real quick. Maybe it's because I need to be um, refreshing. No, nope, that's not it. I would love to know that you're still with me over there. So give me some hearts. Give me some love. Let me know what's going on. Um, thank you. But uh, I, I appreciate that, Laura. I, I need some love tonight, guys, since this is a brand new platform for me. I want to make sure that we're staying engaged. Um, but it, it, thank you, Emily. So it eliminates that fear. And maybe you are like talking to me because maybe you're taking notes. Thank you, Caroline and Vonda. Um, okay, so you resonate with another, you create that bond. So this is how it eliminates fear. Guys, when you come from a place of purpose and passion and you're sharing in that manner, and we're going to talk about how to do that tonight, your fear is gone. I think a lot of times whenever, just think about it for yourself, okay? When you're thinking, I'm so afraid to share with someone, or what if I talk to them about the opportunity or about these products, and what if it's crickets, or what if they, um, what if it, what if they don't care, or what if they don't want to do it? What if they begin to judge me? But when you start having conversation around passion and purpose and why you do what you do, that eliminates the fear because it's, it's about, you're telling story. You're sharing with them your heart of where you are, where you've been and where you're going. And all of a sudden the fear is gone because it's, 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 it's about you and its purpose there. So you begin to display your uniqueness and your authenticity and how you're created. Um, and so that is what starts coming out for others. So let's talk a little bit about you knowing your why and why you're here, why you're doing what it is that you're doing. Um, leading with your why, and many of you have done this, but so many of you have not, right? Like you're new to what we're doing. Um, and I want you to understand this because this is your foundation of doing your business. Leading with your why puts you in a position of passion. When you start telling somebody why you do what you do, when I start sharing about why I do what I do and what my platform of ministry is, I go to a whole nother universe because it's, it's how I'm created. It's, it's how the Lord has made me. It's, um, it's the passion and it's the song of my heart. 
And so that puts you in that place of passion. Your energy, your emotion, it's transferred to another's emotional trigger. Like all of a sudden, they they want to have what you have. They want to have that passion. They want to have that purpose and they're attracted to you. So we hear about that attraction marketing. It's because you're authentically coming for, from a place of purpose of who you are and what you're doing and why you're doing it. So every one of us has a why. Every one of us has this deep-seated purpose or cause or belief. Um, and this is going to take you some time to kind of think through. So I hope you're taking some notes, thinking about it. And Laura's taking notes for sure. Um, taking those notes, thinking about it. I'm going to give you some homework. So I want you to really have time to work through this because when you do, it's going to take you to a whole different level in your, in your business. Okay. But it, it finding that deep seated purpose and cause or belief, that's the source of your passion and of your significant, uh, of your inspiration. And guys, this is where you come to that place of having significance and having fulfillment. It's not about coming and saying, I am successful, um, because success is about you, but significance is about another. Um, you've heard me say several times that uh, I go through my whole day, and at the end of my day, when I put my head on the pillow, my significance is in what I've done for another person. I can lay down and be satisfied whether I added people or didn't add people to my team, whether I was able to have really good conversations or I'm still having crickets. At the end of the day, my significance comes from, did I love people well? Did I educate them? Did I influence them in any way to make them look at life differently? Um, and that, that's my purpose. That's what the Lord's called me to do is to love people well, to hear where, where they are in life. So to be a great listener, um, and then to in some way encourage them. And if I have done that with one person every single day, I can go to bed satisfied. I can go to bed fulfilled because I feel like I've done what God's called me to do. Every one of us are different in doing that. But whenever you find what that deep-seated purpose is, then it turns into that satisfaction and that fulfillment versus I failed today or I wasn't successful or I didn't add numbers or I'm not making the money that I want. It's way, way deeper than that. And I believe without a doubt that the Lord has called you to much bigger things. Um, and so I want us to see that and understand that as we have these conversations. Um, so know why you're here. Like, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you on this team? Why did your upline invite you in? It's not a coincidence. God doesn't make mistakes. Um, you are here for a very specific purpose, and that is for you to get developed yourself. I have been developed so much over the last four and a half years of becoming a better leader, a better person, a better wife, a better mom, a better business uh, leader. Um, so know why you're here, because people don't join companies. They join you, um, and you need to figure out what you're doing here. So what makes you different? I love this graphic of all the blue butterflies, which are so beautiful, and then the one unique red. And all of us are different. We're all unique. We all have different values, skill sets, talents, um, giftedness, and it makes us different and unique. And I want you to embrace that. I want you to love who you are. Um, and kind of think through why would someone want to join me? Now, in sharing that, my very first thought whenever I was building this presentation and thinking through everything was I don't want anyone that is listening to this training to think, why would anyone want to join me? Like, I don't have anything to offer. No, that's not what we're asking here. And if that's what you're thinking, that's stinking thinking, and I want you to remove it immediately. I want it to be, why, why would someone want to join me? And it's because I have a story that they resonate with. Guys, every one of us have a different background, health, history, family dynamics. Every one of us have struggled in some way with our life, with our health, with our jobs, with our finances, 
we are unique, but our story, when we share it with other people, it's going to resonate with them for them to go, Oh my goodness, if you can do this, maybe there is hope for me. And that's what I want you to be looking at. Why would someone want to join me? Because I have something to offer them. I have a way to love them well. I have a way to bring them hope. I need to learn why I am here and really think through it so that I can come to a place of purpose and I can begin sharing with purpose because God has a way bigger impact than I'm ever even seeing and imagining today. So what's an impact goal? And I want us to talk about that. And why do I need one, right? Um, what's the one thing you want that's bigger than you? Um, what's the one thing in life that is more meaningful? I want you to think a little bit about that. What's that one thing that you know, one thing that my pastor says that John Maxwell says is if you could have all the money, resources, and time, what would you do? And that's what we're talking about here. That's that impact goal. Like, what would that be? Because you always hear people say, you know, what I'm doing is way bigger than just me. And it's true. But a lot of times this is where our dreams come in as well. And we forget to dream and we, we, we forget that God has put something in our heart and that he wants to use us in that way. And that's what that is. I mean, what is it like? How do you want the world to be different? How do you want it to be better? And whenever we're talking about the world, like don't, don't go way too big because then it's an elephant and you don't know how to eat it one bite at a time. How do you want your neighborhood to be different? How do you want your community to be different? How do you want your families and your church to be different? How do you want it to be better? When you're on Facebook and you're sharing and you're posting and having these conversations, how um, do you want to influence in a certain way? As you're working through this, I really want you to put down those things. And I want you to just kind of do a brain dump on that, of what that looks like. Because as you're doing that, the final destination of impact, it's not the money. It's what the money can do to impact others. That's that impact goal. It's not about you making thousands of dollars a month or hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It's what that money will do as a tool to impact hundreds and thousands of lives or a community or a church or a ministry or an organization or a school. Um, that is what the impact is. That's how I want you to be thinking. And I want you to get bigger than just about you. Because whenever you know your impact goal, and I've heard many of y'all's goals, um, but whenever you know that, you come to realize that the goals or the ranks or the money that's not what drives you. It's what those things can do to help others. That's what's going to drive you. Do you see the difference there? I want to hear from you guys. If that makes sense to you and you go, okay, like that's it. You know, a lot of times we talk about that big why and we're making a few adjustments here. So I hope that it just makes sense to you, the language that I'm using, because I think that this language maybe for some of you can even make more sense of, it's way bigger than me getting to diamond because it's me getting to diamond and the salary that I'll make with diamond. It's, it's what that can do of helping others. That is literally what drives me every single day because as I grow as a business leader, as I learn how to influence others and bring value to others, I will be impacting them in very unique ways that I know that I've been called to do. And that's what drives me. And that's what I want you guys to be thinking about. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this. So some of you have heard from Simon Sinek and he has a Ted talk. I will make sure to put it into the thread of this live so that you can watch it if you have not watched it. Okay. And um, he talks about this uh, golden circle is what he calls it. And as you can see here, the bull's eye is the why. Uh, and then the next ring is how and the outside ring is what. Now the what is what do you do, right? So um, that is your results. That is results oriented. What, you know, what do I do? 
And uh, that's usually guys, if we're honest, that's where we start. What do, what do I do? Well, I do this. I do network marketing and I work with teams and I work with people. And this is um, how many people I have on my team. This is how much I can make. This is how much you can make. We start there. Um, and we, what he is teaching us is to start with the bullseye because so that's the, what the, how is, how do you, um, do what you do? So that is the process. And in this, think about it a little bit. The how is how Plexus is different or anything, any product or anything that you represent. How is what you do that process? How is it different from someone else? Right? So a lot of times there we'll talk about, we have the greatest comp plan. Um, we have community. We do things so unique because we have an onboarding system. You're talking about how we're different. Um, the why is why do you do what you do? And that is your purpose. That is your belief. That is that core cause of what you're doing. And so I want you to be thinking through that and breaking down why do you do what, what you do? Like, why are you doing this business? What's the purpose behind it? What is that impact goal that you're going after? How do you want to make the world a better place? Guys, that's your unique story. That's where it gets exciting. I ask myself, and I want you to ask yourself, why do I do what I do? Why, what drives me? Why do I do this as a side hustle? Why do I do this as a full time? Um, what is that? Because what happens is that for most network marketing companies, when you are prospecting, so just think about even yourself, maybe we're going to be changing your mindset as we're sharing this. But for most people, we spend all of our telling, uh, all of our time telling people what we do and explaining how we're different right? Think about it. That's where you start. You tell them what you do and why we're different. And let me just explain to you that to build relationships, loyalty, bond, um, having people want to join you is coming. It needs to come from the why. Because why you do what you do, that's where your energy comes. That's where your passion, your purpose and your excitement, and that's where they get excited to go, man, that girl, that guy is so passionate about why he does what he does. I have to join him. Like, I want to be with him. I want to learn from him. I want to be developed by him. Because if he's doing this with his passion, his purpose, what could that do for me? Because I have huge dreams. I have huge goals. So let's look at this a little bit differently, okay? Let's look at it going a little bit further in um, the golden circle. I want you to compare it to the human brain. And this is what Simon Sinek has done here. Is if you see the bullseye of the why and the how, that is in the limbic part of the brain. And that area of the brain, that is the decision making is right there. That is the area that is responsible for our feelings and for our emotions. It literally has no capacity for language. You know, whenever we're talking features, benefits, how we're different, the limbic brain is into the emotion side, the feeling side. That's where the bond is created is right there. So whenever you are leading with that what, like, what do I do? And we are leading from the process side and the results sides. So that's the neocortex area. And that area is responsible for rationalizing and analytical thought. It helps us to understand facts and figures and features and benefits. That's where that is. And so whenever you have people that logically say, I don't think I had the money to do that, or I don't have the budget for that, or um, I don't think that that's going to work for me because of A, B, C, and D. And I'm not like you. I'm not a salesperson. Okay. All that is happening because you're talking what? And it's in the neocortex of the area. That is where that's the responsibility of the language. But what you need to understand fully and completely is decisions are made from the limbic brain, from that inner core area. That is that gut feeling of, I don't know, and I don't know why I'm jumping into this, but I think that this is for me, right? I think that 
if they can do it, I can do it. And I just, my gut core is I need to jump into this. That's where that's happening is in that limbic brain. If only speaking the what, then you're, ta you're not tapping into the decision making because we make decisions off of emotions. We make decisions off of bonding, resonating, curiosity. So that's where you want to be having your conversations is right there. Um, understanding that golden circle, once you understand your why, you're gonna be able to continue to clearly articulate what makes you feel fulfilled and to be un better understood as to what drives your behavior. And whenever you're having those conversations, like that is your natural best because all of a sudden the fear is gone. It's just the passion that is coming out. And so we want to exercise that. We want to do some homework around this because this is where you're going to shine. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about that why um, and understanding that you're going to work with purpose on purpose whenever you come to this place of understanding what your why is and being able to clearly articulate it. So let's get into the uh, nuts and bolts of this. So let's discover your why. Um, guys, this is being recorded, so you can even go back. If you don't get notes on everything, you can go back and um, you know, look through this again. But let's start here. Start um, with what led you to your business. And I want you to write that down. Like, what is it that led you to even start this business opportunity? I want you to examine the events in your life or the situations that were going on in life. So kind of write those things down, jot those things down. There were areas in your life that you were dissatisfied. There was dissatisfaction, there was concern, there was fear, but what was going on? There's five different areas, time, money, security, health, and purpose. Most people, there are one to two or two to three areas that people were lacking in a very specific area where they were dissatisfied. And because of that, because of that core inner fear, dissatisfaction, concern, it led them, it led you to start this business, okay? So for me, it was time, money, and health. I actually had three areas. For some people, it is purpose. Like I have heard so many jewels say, this is my purpose, like this is it. Um, but for me, it was time, health, money. And I would love to hear from you, like put into uh, the comments, what is yours? We talked about it earlier today. So some of you guys wrote that down. If you didn't go back and look at that graphic from a post earlier or put it here in the comments, I would love to hear what it was for you that brought you to start your business. Um, but I want you to spend some time doing that later this week. So you're gonna have this assignment and I want you just to empty out your brain. I want you to write down everything, just kind of do a brain dump because we're gonna clean it up as we go. You're gonna get very concise, but you have to start from kind of throwing everything on the wall and see what sticks, right? So write down the details of your story as it relates to one of those areas. For me, I broke it down and I, I did a brain dump on time. I did a brain dump on health and I did a brain dump on money. Now, if you have more than one area, this is the cool thing, guys, is as you work through this, you have different opportunities to, to share different pieces of your story depending on who you're talking to or what the situation is. And I really do believe that the Lord is gonna kind of tell you which one to talk through and where it's gonna resonate. And what I love about this is this is kind of even, you know, um, from the place of just Christianity, we all have a story of who we were before Christ, when Christ came into our life and who we are after Christ. And for many of us, there's kind of different legs to that story. Like for my story, I would never share all of my story in one sitting because there's just a lot of stuff. Like I just have a lot of baggage pre-Christ. Um, but I take bits and pieces of that conversation in that story and I share it depending on who I'm talking to and what's going on in their life. 
it's the same thing here. So it really um, will benefit you if you do a brain dump on each one, if you have more than one. I want you to be very, very specific. Uh, talk about your feelings and emotions as you're working through that. What lessons did you learn? Um, if it was the possibility that maybe what led you to this is because you felt like you were going to lose a job or you did lose a job or there was a big fear, what were the lessons that you learned through that? Like that you never want someone else to control your paycheck or you don't want, you don't ever want, you know, a boss that is a negative, hard boss. Maybe you don't ever want someone else to control you in that way. Maybe that's what led you to this business. So whatever those lessons learned, write those things down. What challenges did you have to overcome? And you know what, guys? There's good and bad experiences. It makes us who we are, but what I don't want us to do is to get into a woe is me attitude. That's not what this whole thing is about. Um, I want you to see the good in those experiences that led you to who you are today. Um, so look at it from that standpoint and um, work from there. So let's talk a little bit about the goal of sharing, building that relationship, resonating. You want to resonate with people, bond with people, create this curiosity um, to where they're kind of leaning in is what I always say. When you're having this conversation, you can see that they want to know a little bit more because the in the end, as the prospect is listening, I promise their brain is just going 90 to nothing because they really do care about you. But in the end, they care about what you can do for them. So as they're listening to what led you to the business, what led you to the opportunity, um, and as it's resonating in their mind, they really care about themselves. Like, is this going to help me? Is this my answer? Is this what I've been praying for? Is this what's going to get us out of debt? Like the whole time they're listening and resonating and nodding their head and that curiosity in their mind, they're thinking, what will, what will this do for me? Okay. And you've got to know that. And as you're building this out and preparing yourself to share, you have to be very, very clear and very concise. Um, what Bob Heilig says is that you need to have this down in 90 seconds or less. And that sounds like, oh my goodness gracious, I could never do this in 90 seconds. You really, really, really can but it's you getting concise with it, not being too wordy, and we're gonna work through that, so you're gonna hear it, okay? So don't go, there's absolutely no way I can do that, Melissa. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about sharing. If you're scared or you don't have confidence whenever it's time to start sharing with people, it's probably because you don't know what you're gonna say. And so everything that we're doing here tonight is because I want you to know what to say. Penny, yours is health and purpose, that's awesome. And Liz, yours is money, time, and health, just like me. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so you, I want, this is, this is why, and I'll tell you, if you're anything like me, slowing down long enough to do homework, slowing long, down long enough to kind of get everything written down, in the end, it will be the greatest thing that you could ever do for your business. But right now, you might be thinking, I don't have time. This is time well spent because when you can sit down and know what you're going to say, you've memorized it, you've thought about it, you've talked through it over and over again, maybe role played with some friends, then you are ready and your passion is just going to shine. And then you're going to get momentum. People are going to want to be adding and wanting to know more about what you're doing. They're going to want to join you and you're going to say it was so worth that hour. So give it an hour this week, give it 30 minutes a day, but you need to take the time, you need to learn your why, you need to learn your impact statement, and you need to memorize it because that is where your confidence will come from. You've heard me say so many times that whenever it was time for me to start growing my network, whenever I felt like, okay, I've touched everybody that I know, I've got to get some new friends, right? I've got to get to know some new people. Um, I started going to network marketing groups and I would from, I wrote down what I was going to say on a note card. 
and I would memorize it. And then all the way to the location, I would say it over and over and over again out loud in my car because I'm scared half to death to do stuff like that. It goes against every grain of my personality, but I knew that I had to overcome um, to grow. I knew that I had to overcome to grow my business, to grow my leadership, to grow my influence. Um, and that's what we have to do. So that's what I'm asking you to do. So let's talk a little bit about the framework uh, to sharing with purpose, okay? Um, so this is kind of, there's five steps through this, this and the next slide. Um, and I want you to work through this. What was lacking in your life before you started your business? We've talked about that time, health, money, security, or purpose. You're going to break that down. You're going to talk through each one of those like we've already said. Can you give a specific example that was a turning point for you? Like, what was it that you were like, okay, this is it. Like, I've got to find a side gig, a side hustle. I've got to get into something that's going to bring in an income, whatever that is. Was it college tuition, fear of losing a job? You had budget needs in your family. You had more month than you did paycheck. Was it dead in roads medically? Like you were having all these health crises and health issues and you were falling into dead end roads. You know, did you have life changes that happened in your family? So what, give like an example towards, if it's time, talk about a specific example that was your turning point that you were like, I gotta do something different um, for each one of those, okay? And then how did the experience make you feel? Like when you found out that you were the possibility of being on the chopping block for losing your job, what did that make you feel like? Like your stomach went out, you know, your, your heart went up into your throat. You were, you were holding back tears. All you could think about was how am I going to take care of my children and my babies or how are my kids going to go to college? Like what was that experience and that feeling? You need to have the emotion. Were you scared, sleepless nights, concerned, worried? What were those things? I need for you to identify that. Okay. How did your business provide a solution or solve the problem? So getting into your current business with Plexus, how did it begin to provide a solution? So I don't want you to talk about Plexus. I want you to just talk about how your personal business provided a solution or began to solve the problem. How did it give you hope for your future? Stay very generic with that because you want to build curiosity and build a bond. Um, and they're resonating with you. They're listening. They're having that conversation, okay? And then the next piece is what is the specific contribution and impact that you're looking to make? So with this one, you talked about this was my problem. I made the decision to start my own business. This is how my business is solving my problem or how it has become the solution. And because of that, I am going and I'm going to impact all these lives because I know that there are other people just like me that need this. I know that there are people like me that are losing their job or that they have a crummy boss or that they're a mommy at home and they love their children, but they really want adult conversation or want to be creative. You want to tie it back to your story. The mission of why I do what I do is to what? Right? And so it is, um, and then you're going to say, I'm able to do what I do because of my company, because of Plexus, but that comes at the end. So you're, you're giving them, here's my problem. Here's how I resolved it. Because I've resolved it, I am on mission to find people that need this opportunity because I know that they're having sleepless nights. I know that they're worried sick about how they're going to send their kids to college. I know that they have a desire just like I did for their kids to play um, sports and they don't have the money for their kids to play sports. I'm on mission to find those people just like me because I know that I have a solution for them because I am able to do what I'm doing today because of my business. Um, so that's what you're wanting to do. Prospects need to see Plexus as the tool that's going to get them the ability to do their passions and meet their needs just like it has you. Plexus is a tool. It is a vehicle. It is an instrument to allow you to do that big impact, right? of what your future is, your why, your goals, your dreams, how you wanna impact the world, make the world better, how you wanna impact your family, your neighborhood, your community, your charity. 
um, that is they need to see there is a way for you to get out of debt. There is a way for you to get out from underneath where you are right now and have a better future. That's what you're going to be sharing. Guys, is that making sense? Uh, talk to me a little bit. Are you loving it? Is it resonating with you? Are you excited about doing the homework? I would really love to hear from you um, and what's going on. So put your why to work. I really want you for the month of June to commit to sharing your why with as many people as possible this month. I want you to contact everyone. I want you to contact people that you um, have said no to you in the past, people that you're just now meeting, um, and be able to start sharing with them, okay? Make that fresh contact list and um, get ready to share your wine. Be very, very intentional with what you're doing. So there's two different approaches that you can do. Um, okay, there's a direct approach and an indirect approach, and this is coming directly from Bob Heilig, so I will uh, let you know that. Because um, you putting your why to work, it really is, this is not about you making a sale, getting someone to join, having the conversation. What I want you to practice in June is being able just to build relationships to share with someone, maybe encourage them, love them well, give them hope of just letting them hear why you do what you do. And you're practicing, you're having conversation, you're building up your own passion and energy and excitement because the more you do it, the more you go, this feels good. It feels good to encourage other people um, and tell them why I'm doing what I'm doing. And some of those absolutely will join you. But I think what I want you to see is in the end, your end result is in sharing your why is having people resonate, extending hope, encouraging, and then it's icing on the cake if they want to join you. I think that doing it that way is at the end of the day, you go, it was a really good day. I shared with three people, five people, whatever your number is, one person. And I think in sharing with them, I really, I think I gave them hope. I think I encouraged them. In fact, the conversation was so good that I have a way to pray for them now. They have a way to pray for me. They heard more about who I am than they ever have in the past. Um, and that helps you sleep at night because I think that you see what the Lord is doing. And then if they join, it's just icing on the cake. So, okay. Here's the direct approach. I'd love to share with you why I started my business in the first place. So, hey, Susie. Hey, if it's okay, you know, I just want to share with you why I started my business in the first place. I've never really had that chance to do that. Um, it may or may not be for you, but would you just be open to letting me do that? And if it sounds interesting, great. And if not, that's totally fine as well. But I just want you to know what drives me what gives me pleasure and passion and excitement. Um, and even in hearing all of that, you might, it just might resonate in ways. So like, that's what you're doing here with this direct approach um, is saying, girl, you know what? I don't even think you know why I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't even think that you realize that I resigned. There's a reason that I resigned from traditional work. Um, and that I'm doing what I'm doing today. Um, I can we just grab some coffee because I want to share that with you because it's pretty exciting. Um, and so that's how I would do it is have a conversation that way. Indirect approach. I know that you aren't interested in my business. So this is someone that you've already talked to and they're just like, nope, don't want to do that. And maybe even listening to this training tonight, you're kind of like, okay, maybe I did that differently. Maybe I could do it with more purpose and more adding value. So that would be someone like this. I know that you aren't interested in my business, but I wanted to ask you a huge favor. Would you give me an opportunity to tell you why I even started my business? The reason is that I'm looking to expand my business and want to see if anyone that you know comes to mind when you hear my story. Would you just be open to that? It really would be a huge help. Now, that is an indirect way. This is what I would tell you. Take this as a framework 
but build it into your voice and how your conversation would go. Like this indirect approach is something that I would do with someone that I'm getting ready to go have lunch with or coffee with that I already know that they, they don't want to do what I'm doing. And I would say, Hey Judy, you know what? I just, can I just share with you? I know that you're not interested in doing the business that I do or Plexus. I know that we've already had that conversation, but can I just share with you a little bit about why I do what I do? Um, because I'm always expanding. I mean, you know that, right? But I'm expanding. There's a purpose. And even why I'm expanding has purpose to it. And I'd love for you to hear a little bit about what the Lord's doing in my life and what I believe that he's calling me to do. Um, and just see if you feel like that possibly it would resonate with somebody else. That's the way that I would approach it. Now, I will also tell you that as you begin this process, having the direct and the indirect approach, having it as a framework allows you to have the conversation. Guys, in the end, if you really will take this challenge, if you really will kind of make this part of who you are as you're prospecting and sharing and being very, very purposeful, it's going to become its own dialogue. It's going to become its own conversation to where you don't even have to say do you mind? I want to share with you why I do what I do. You're not even going to have to say that. It's just going to flow out of your mouth as you're having conversation because your purpose and your passion is going to become so at the forefront of your thinking because you realize that when you are sharing from a purpose filled place, that you are encouraging, that you are resonating, that you are building bonds to where it's just going to be part of who you are and what you do. So you won't even need a script and it won't even be like, when do, okay, Melissa, when, when would I ask that? Or when does that become conversation? It just flows into the conversation because you've almost become an expert of sharing why you do what you do. Um, so just know that, okay, it will transform and morph into its own way of you having conversation every single day but this is a framework for you to get started. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. I hope you're excited about it. Um, I know I am. So, and y'all have heard me say so many times that, you know, what I do in this business and this opportunity and sharing with y'all and training y'all and developing leaders, like it is my ministry. I feel like that the Lord has given each one of us a purpose within what we do of our skills, our talents, our backgrounds, our experiences and what he's called us to do. And this just, it's not compartmentalized. It's all encompassing of one piece, right? And you will get to where you see it, feel it, and know it yourself. So I want you to share very, very authentically. Be genuine. Share why, not what. Don't share any about any more about I do what I do. Share I, this is why I do it. This is my excitement, my passion. This is what my hope is. This is what I see my future looking like. That's where you're going to share from. Um, and when they're curious and interested, you want to share a third party. So a third party tool. So let's talk a little bit about that. So. You're out, you're having a conversation on the phone or you've been messaging back and forth and you've been leaving voice clips and you're having conversation that way. And I know a lot of millennials, you do it that way. I've been told so many times in the last 24 hours by all my amazing millennial sweet people that I learned so much from is that a lot of them, they don't talk on the phone, they message, they text. So maybe that's what you're doing through this process and you're leaving voice clips. But as soon as they say, that is the coolest thing ever, like I wanna hear a little bit more because literally, you know when you were talking about your job and how it wasn't fulfilling and you were trying to figure out how you could do things, that's kind of where I am right now. And if you're telling me that your business, this new business, is like resolving that for you and getting you excited about some life and doing some things differently and growing you as a person, I'm really interested in hearing more. You've got to be ready to then send them a third party tool. You guys know this, we have incredible videos. Maybe if you have some favorite videos that you've been sharing as third party tools, why don't you pop that into our thread tonight um, so that others, you can be sharing it with some of our other business builders. It might be something that they want to use as third party tools. So third party tools can be an opportunity event that was recorded. 
It can be something in your shareables, in your back office. We have incredible tools. It can be um, an information sheet in your shareables or a video. Um, it could be Brooke Hemingway. She shares incredibly well of the opportunity, and that's on YouTube, so you could get those. But what I would say, and I've left it in this page, I'm pretty sure I did it um, last week, um, of things that you can put into your your phone in your notes and if someone says okay girl i'm interested i want to know what you're doing you can immediately say okay i'm shooting you a video it's only about five seven minutes i want you to watch it and let's talk tomorrow that's exactly what you're going to do okay you don't do any more of the talking they've heard your story they've seen your passion they've gotten curious you need to bring in validation by bringing in a third party and Christina is saying to keep it short. And I do think that you keep it short in the beginning because you're still enticing them. You're still wanting them to be curious. And if it gets too long, then you're going to lose them. So keep it short because as they get curious and say, okay, girl, I'm all in, then it can get longer, right? But that's after you've gotten them going. Um, so then you send that to them and you immediately say, as we've always trained on that, as soon as you send it, say, Hey, five, seven, 10 minutes, whatever it is, I want you to watch it tonight. Let's, let's talk tomorrow. And then you set that next time to have a conversation, answer any questions. Hey, what questions did you have? What did you love about the video? What made you curious in it? And then you have conversation around that. So that's exactly what you've got to do guys. Um, Okay, if you have any questions around that, just let me know, okay? All right, so that's kind of the June cal challenge that we're gonna be doing this month is complete the exercises that we've walked through. I'm gonna do some different posts throughout the week so that you'll have those and you'll know how to do that. Create that fresh contest list. And y'all, this is such a perfect time for this because we're going into convention. I know some of you guys cannot be with us at convention. Number one, we're gonna miss you. Number two, just keep on working. We will feed you information as we get the information uh, so that you will have it. But that contest, that contact list is going to be fantastic to have because we will have new products rolling out. We will have information uh, that you're going to be wanting to share with your prospects. Identify those third party tools. So know exactly what you're going to have and have it close by so that you can send it. I want you to write your impact goal and your why. I want you to memorize it and I want you to get it to down to 90 seconds to share it. Um, and then use that direct and indirect approach. And bottom line is, and I want to hear from you guys on the thread. I want you to say, I am committed to doing this. I want you to commit to reaching out to as many people as you can in June um, and sharing with them why you do what you do. Uh, and so tell me what your goal is uh, and if you're going to do that. How many people do you want to reach out to in the month of June? You're building relationships. You're getting people to resonate with you. You're building loyalty. Okay. So with that, I'm going to um, stop my share and hopefully I am back to just you guys and it looks like everything is going great for y'all. Um, Christina, I think that I answered your question. Vonda, I'm so glad that it sounds like that it could be very effective. Um, I want you guys to work through all this good stuff. Thanks for being on with me. Can you give me a thumbs up or a heart if you love doing Facebook Lives like this? Guys, I want to train, I want to give out information in ways that you will engage with, in ways that are easy for you, exciting for you, ways that you feel like that you can be in community. So I want to hear from you, was this good for you or would you love to do it a little bit differently? Because I wanna do what's best for you, okay? You guys have a great night. Thanks so much for being with me and I will see y'all soon.